Just take a look at that, dear. Look. How many pumpkin pies do you think you could make out of a big fellow like that, huh? Oh, you and your pumpkins. <clears throat> oh, just look at this. Isn't this grand? Do you suppose we could raise cabbages like that? Pumpkin pie. Let me see. Well, we might use those vacant lots this year. Well, you'll have to move a lot faster than you did last year. <clears throat> That's funny. I can't find any potato seeds. You don't grow potatoes from seeds. Well, then how do you grow them? You cut up potatoes with an eye or two in each piece, and that's what you plant. But if you have to have potatoes to grow potatoes, well, how'd they ever get started in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy. You're going too far back, Jimmy. This is a victory garden, not a garden of Eden, you know. <laughs> Couldn't we buy just a few roses? That talisman is gorgeous. Listen, the way things are, you'll have to go easy on the perfume of flowers for the duration and be satisfied with the good old smell of onions, like these babies. That's right, Jimmy. Vegetables are going to be plenty scarce and plenty high, too, so we've got to grow lots of them. Oh, still, I think we can manage a few roses for Judy. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Well, let's decide on our victory garden, huh? This scene was duplicated in many a family circle the country over as amateur gardeners pored over the catalogs and wished for far-off days to come, when they would reap the fruits of their labors. Let's pass over the months of hard work sowing and cultivating and fighting weeds, insects, and weather, for now it's the happy harvest time. As Mother said, there's no room in a victory garden for sprawling vegetables like pumpkins and squash. But what's this? Could Dad have bought them? Looks like he's determined to have that pumpkin pie. Hmm, Mother's cabbages are not so bad. Jimmy is getting stronger every minute with his onions. And Judy has substituted beans for roses. Whatever are we going to do with all the vegetables we have left over this fall? Well, we'll eat them, of course. Well, we can't eat them all before they spoil. Well, then we can count them. Oh, that would be too expensive. Say, maybe you're right. Anyway, we'll store them. Store everything? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to store some in the ground and the rest of them in the cellar and attic. You know, I've always wanted to try those things out, and here's my chance. How to keep the vegetables through the winter? Well, there are four ways of providing storage in and around the average home. The attic or garage for dried seeds such as beans and peas. Bush beans are picked or pulled up when a maximum number of pods are ripe. When thoroughly dried, the beans are threshed out. Flailing in a bag is an easy way. They are then placed in glass fruit jars or cans for storing until they are needed. The attic is also a good place to store onions, if not too cold. They must not be allowed to freeze. After they are thoroughly dried, they may be hung on slatted shelves or crates where the air can move freely around each bulb. The second favorite storage place is the cellar or basement, as it's more frequently called nowadays. The average cellar with a furnace is too warm and dry for successful storage of most vegetables. The temperature should be between 35 and 45 for most vegetables, and also there should be a window so the air will be fresh wholesome and somewhat damp. By choosing a corner with a window, you save on labor and materials, for the walls of the house serve as two walls of your storage room. Then, too, with this arrangement, there is less likelihood of overheating, and the window provides the necessary cooling ventilation. The window can be left open whenever the outdoor temperature is lower than that of the storage room, but must be closed before the room temperature gets down to the freezing point. Preferably, the storage room should have a double wall. The temperature is more easily controlled if the space in the wall is filled with sawdust or other insulating material. But a double wall without filling will be fairly satisfactory. Single walls will be more efficient if building paper is used between the boards and the studs. It helps to insulate them. However, be sure that your wall meets the floor closely, and also that it meets the ceiling to keep out warm air from the furnace. 
The door should fit tightly in its frame, for even small cracks mean air leakage and humidity and temperature trouble. Care must be taken to remove all fruit and vegetables with blemishes or showing any tendency to decay. In storing apples, for example, be sure that only sound fruit goes into the storage crates. Beets, carrots, salsify, and other root vegetables are pulled or dug when the ground is dry enough to work. The tops are twisted off, and then the roots are examined to sort out those that show bad cuts or signs of bruising or rotting. Apples may be stored in boxes or baskets or on the floor if the bottom of the container is slightly elevated. That avoids the danger of fruit on the bottom getting too wet in case the floor is very moist. Root crops, such as beets, carrots, and salsify, may be kept in boxes or splint baskets on the concrete floor where the air is cool and moist. They must be kept from drying out. Covering with cloth or packing with sand will help. Squash may be kept in the main part of the basement, but not too near the furnace. They require moderate temperature and moderately dry air. They will keep better if they are not piled deeply upon each other. Parsnips improve in flavor if left in the ground, even after fairly cold weather sets in, for freezing does not injure them. Before the ground is frozen hard, they can be dug and then placed with the other roots in the cellar storage room. Though cellar storage is preferable, vegetables can be stored outdoors where storage space may be either above or underground, but it must be dry and covered sufficiently to provide an even temperature above freezing. Almost any container may be used. The sunken barrel provides an easy, economical, and efficient means of storing root crops and potatoes. Father will show us how to use a barrel. First, he selected a well-drained spot and digs a pit about six inches in depth. After knocking out the head and cutting a vent hole in the side, he places the barrel in the pit with the vent up. This is an ideal place for storing cabbages, for if they are kept in the cellar, the characteristic cabbage odor is likely to permeate the entire house. In such a pit as this can also be kept potatoes, carrots, turnips, beets, and parsnips, but these must not be mixed with cabbages. Now the barrel will be covered with straw and earth. In sections where the winters are severe, there should be several alternate layers of straw and earth. When the root crops or potatoes are first placed in the barrel, the top is left open to allow excess heat and moisture to escape. When colder weather comes, the lid is closed and covered with straw, corn stalks, leaves or discarded rugs or similar material to keep the vegetables from freezing. The straw over the hole in the barrel is banked up to form a ventilating shaft and is covered with a piece of tin to keep moisture out. Finally, a small trench is dug around the pit with an outlet to carry off surface water. An important vegetable to the average family is the white potato. They should be kept in the cool basement storeroom with the root crops, but must be kept dark to prevent greening. If outdoor storage is to be used, Either a barrel or box or the pit or mound will do. This is a well-drained area, so father is digging a pit six inches deep. If there had been a drainage problem, father would have built a mound. Now for a six-inch layer of straw, and we are ready for the potatoes. Place them on the straw, and don't make the bottom of the pile of potatoes any larger than the pit. After a few bushels of potatoes have been placed in a pyramid, they are covered with straw or whatever was chosen for the lining. Notice that the straw is carried up to a point at the tip of the pyramid to provide a ventilating flue. Now the pyramid is covered with earth to a depth of two or three inches to form a mound. In regions where the winters bring zero temperatures, the covering should be a foot or more in thickness. After the earth has been shoveled on, the ventilating hole at the top is covered and weighted with a stone to keep out the rain. A drainage trench around the mound and the job is finished. If potatoes are stored where it is warm, they will sprout and shrivel, thereby lose their flavor as well as becoming soggy. 
Just as potatoes must be kept cool in moist air, so onions must be cool and dry, for they will mold and rot if there is much moisture present. Well, so now our family has a supply of beans and peas dried and put away in glass jars. In the cellar are apples and root vegetables that will grace the family table all winter. Near the furnace are squash and dad's favorites, the pumpkins. In the barrel in the pit are sleeping beets, parsnips, potatoes and carrots. And in the mound are homegrown white potatoes. Now they know their way through the pages of the catalogs. Fortified with experience, they look back on the summer of healthful activity, a purposeful recreation and profitable and patriotic endeavor. In pantry and storeroom, in pit and mound, they have tangible proof of their husbandry. And so, with confidence and high resolve, they plan next year's Victory Garden. Oh, boy, look at that pumpkin pie! Oh,